Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, today we're talking about the best dates for you to retire as a federal employee in 2024, because not every date is created equal. There's some major dates that are way better than all of them. And if you're new here, so good to have you. My name is Dallin Haas, a financial planner who serves federal employees every single day, and I absolutely love it. Now, I won't keep you waiting. Here are the five best dates and most popular dates to retire in 2024. We got May 31st, June 29th, November 30th, December 31st, and January 11th, 2025. Okay. Now we're going to talk about today why these dates are the best so that you, whenever, whatever year you're picking, you can pick a date that makes the most sense for you. So let me walk you through a couple things. Number one, May, May 31. That is near the end of a month and the end of a pay period. June 29th, again, end of the month, end of the pay period, November 30th, end of the month, end of the pay period, he, seeing a, um, a pattern here, okay? December 31, this one's a little different. This is the end of the year, okay? And near the end of a month, okay? January 11th, what the heck is January 11th doing in here? Well, January 11th is the end of a pay period and the end of the leave calendar year. So here's the deal. Those are the reasons why these are the best, but let me talk to you why why those reasons are the best, okay? So here's the deal. There are three things that make a date good or not good, okay? Let's talk about it. First, why would anyone want to retire at the end of a month, okay? As you see, many of these are at the end of a month. Well, the reason is your pension as a FERS federal employee is payable the month after you retire, okay? So if you retire, let's say January 1st, Okay, instead of December 31st, let's say you go January 1st. When is your pension payable? It's not payable until February 1st, okay? The month after you retire. But what if you just retire one day earlier, December 31st, just one day, when is your pension payable? Well, January 1st, it's now payable January 1st, because again, your pension is payable the month after you retire. So if you go towards the end of a month, that means there's less gap between when your paychecks stop and when your pension is payable, okay? So keep that in mind. That is why people prefer to retire at the end of a month. So there's less gap between paychecks and pension checks. So that is number one, retire at the end of a month whenever possible. Now, these three right here and this one are all the end of a pay period. Why would someone want to retire at the end of a pay period? The reason is your, your leave, your sick leave, annual leave, that accrues, right? You get you accrue every single pay period, but it doesn't accrue until the end of the pay period, okay? So if you leave service in the middle of a pay period, you lose the leave you would have accrued if you just made it to the end of the period. It hits, right? It hits your leave bank basically at the end of the pay period. So if you go just to the end of the pay period, you accrue all the leave that you can for the time you put in. Again, it's not that big of a deal. We're only talking, you know, a handful of hours for most people, right? So it's not that big of a deal, but hey, why not? If you can pick a date that's the end of the month and the end of a, a, um, a pay period, then why not do that as well? Now, why do people, as many of you might know, why do people retire near the end of the year? Why do people retire? December 31st is one of the most popular retirement dates of all these dates. Why do people go at the end of the year? Let me talk you through why. Many of you already know that your annual leave, okay, your annual leave, if you have unused annual leave on the books at retirement, what happens to that? Your agency is going to cut you a check for a lump sum check for as if you had actually work that time. So if you have 200 hours of annual leave at retirement, they're going to cut you a check as if you had worked an additional 200 hours. Okay. Now, what does that have to do with retiring at the end of the year? Well, many of you know, there is a, you can only take so many hours with you into any new leave year. Okay. You can only take so many with you to the next year. For many of you, the limit is 240 hours. Depending on your position, it could be more, okay? So what many people do is the year before they retire, they take 240 into that last year and they accrue, accrue, and they don't use their annual leave much. And then at the end of the year, let's say they have 300 some hours, whatever it ends up being, they get a lump sum check for that entire amount. Because again, if you retire 
um, after, after the beginning of a new leave year, then you only could take that 240 into that new year. So keep that in mind. That's why January 11th this year, because that's the last day of that leave year for 2024. It kind of creeps into 2025 in this case. So that is why, again, these three are all the end of a month, which again, your pension is payable the, the next day, which is great. And the, or these four, sorry, that these four are end of a month. These three plus this one are end of a pay period, okay? And these two are the end, or very close to the end of the leave year to maximize your annual leave. So those are the things to consider when picking a retirement date. But here's the deal. One last thing I'd say is when do you want to retire, right? All of this is well and good. And it tweaks your benefits a little bit this, this way or that way, right? And if we can maximize them, might as well. However, when do you want to retire? When are you first eligible to retire, right? These are the sort of questions you have to ask yourself as well. It's not always just about the numbers. What time of year do you want to retire? Is there a certain trip you want to take right away? When does that sort of thing have to happen, right? That's the sort of questions you want to ask as well. How do you tie in the number side to your life? to your goals, to your dreams, and the things you want to do. That is when a great retirement plan and financial plan happens is when they can tie together and go from there. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. If you have any follow-up questions, please put in the comments below. And there's actually a link in the description to submit your questions to us. And we take those questions. We base our future content on those. So have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time.